Well guys, I am finally back after being delayed since I didn't get up to like noon to do the two my 2021 NFL season week one picks as this is the sixth season I've done this and I am looking forward to another year and I already did everything I got everything all set up I did not update any of the um stats for the teams from last year wherever these teams were placed at so ignore this for right now next week these numbers will be up to date for teams and no these are not the Cowboys and Buccaneers numbers or any other teams numbers if you think about it. I mean if you're wondering these are just whatever team that was placed here for that current week as I got all the games already set up as you can see and of course these were my results from last year as you see last year I started off the year 9-7 week 1 and I ended up finishing 170 85 to 1 which is two thirds correct that actually, I think, might be up there as, like, one of the best I had. Don't remember all the time I had, but that's pretty damn good. So, anyways, let's get to my week one picks. As I looked up um, preseason results and injuries earlier, too. That's another reason why the results took so long for it to pop up. <clears throat> so, anyways, we get the season started, of course, with the kickoff game tonight. As the game that they should not have picked, but... It's the Cowboys at Buccaneers for the first time since 2015 as the Cowboys won the last two and the, the um, Buccaneers haven't beaten them since 2015. So, of course, the Cowboys are hoping they have a much better season last year, which I'm sure they will with Dak being back, but they're going to have a tough start to the year. And, of course, doesn't help they have to go up against the defending champions who are probably going to be better this year than last year. I'm picking the Buccaneers, obviously, for this one. Then we get to the week, I mean, on 1 p.m. games. Starting off with the Jaguars at the Texans. As the Texans won the last six, the Jaguars haven't beaten them since 2017, so hoping to finally end that streak. As the Jaguars begin a new era, and of course, oh my god, the Texans! Holy shit! I would have thought all the problems would have ended once Bill O'Brien left. Now Deshaun Watson's not starting! Oh, wow, that is crazy. I swear, if the if the um Texans refuse to start Deshaun Watson the entire year, I think they're gonna be like the the, the Lions of the N the AFC and be like the worst team in the league. That is pretty bad. So throughout the year, until I found out Watson was not starting, I was picking the Texans to win this, especially as they kept that streak going. Watson and the Texans crushed the Jaguars last year, but you know what? In an upset, I'm gonna pick the Jaguars to get it. Yep. I mean. With Tyrod Taylor being a starter, the Texans are probably no better than the Jaguars. Like, the Texans, the only thing that was good for him was at least they had Deshaun Watson. But if he's not starting, then they're definitely, like, one of the worst teams in the league. So I think the Jaguars might pull off the upset. All right, then we get to an outer conference matchup. As the Chargers are at the football team for the first time since 2013, the Chargers won the last one in 2017. The football team hasn't beaten them since 2013, and the Chargers haven't won in Landover since 2005. So, of course, the Chargers had a nice end of the year last year when they started off 3-9. and nine, And, of course, they have massive playoff ass, um, predictions and hype around them, which I also have for them, too. The football team, of course, is trying to defend their um, division title, which is going to be tough since the Cowboys and all of them are probably going to be better this time around. Of course, curious how the quarterback will be with Fitzpatrick, which honestly might be an upgrade over the last few years, which is saying something. This game is going to be interesting as hell between these two 7-9 teams. It can go easily either way. But in a close one, I think I'll pick the Chargers for this one because I trust Herbert more than Fitzpatrick. Although they're, they're right, the football team's defense is definitely going to give the Chargers hell. So we'll see what happens there because that will most likely be the game I'll probably be getting for uh, I don't know, CBS maybe, since the Chargers are the away team. Then we get to a huge outer conference matchup. As the Seahawks are at the Colts for the first time since 2013. The Seahawks won the last one. The Colts haven't beaten them since 2013. And the Seahawks haven't won in Indianapolis since 1997. So they hope to eventually end that long drought. So the Seahawks, of course, want to have that terrible taste in their mouth after getting crushed by the Rams in the wild card last year off of them and have a really good start to the year after having their best season last year since 2014. They're going to have a tough task though as they're going to have to go against another playoff team in the Colts hoping to also get their um one and done loss in the playoffs um, out of their mouth. Now this game, this game of all the games probably this um week is probably going to be the toughest to pick because they're 
both teams have a lot of flaws that could hurt them in the end. On the one hand, the Seahawks. All they got is Russell Wilson, pretty much. That's really all they got for offense. Their defense, although it got better near the second half of the year, I think, but it's still pretty bad. So that could hurt them. The Colts, def the Colts are really balanced. The only problem is their quarterback, Carson Wentz, which, remember, at first we didn't know if he was going to be playing, but now it looks like he is. But you just don't know how he's going to play. Is he going to play like he used to, or is he going to play like shit like he did last year? You just don't know. And it can go either way. Colts defense might give... Um, Russell Wilson trouble, but at the same time he could torch him too, so it can go either way. It's really going to probably come down to is the Colts offense, but more importantly, is Carson Wentz going to show up and play good against the Seahawks defense? And, oh my god, it's like a really tough one to pick, mostly because I just don't know how he's going to play. So because of that, I think I'm going to have to give the slight edge to the Seahawks, because at least I know Russell Wilson will probably do somewhat good against the Colts defense. Whereas Carson Wentz, I just don't know, and I'm and I'm not confident about that ability. But if he did play good, then I definitely would see the Colts get it. But I just don't see, well, not see, I just don't know right now because there's so many question marks about Wentz. So then we get to an interesting one as the Jets are at the Panthers for the first time since 2013. As the Panthers won the last two, the Jets haven't beaten them since 2009. And they haven't beaten them in Charlotte since 2001. As Sam Darnold is going to go up against his former team. How? What a funny way to start off the year. That was a really um, funny pick for them to start off the year. As the Jets hope to begin the new era with Zach Wilson. That will be interesting to see for them. And of course the Panthers are hoping Sam Darnold was just screwed over by the Jets and plays good. But unfortunately, these two teams are not really that good. But they're at home, and I think they have a better roster than the Jets, so I'm probably going to pick the Panthers for this one. But hey, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't play good and the Jets pull off an upset. Then it's the Vikings at the Bengals for the first time since 2013, as the Vikings won the last one. The Bengals haven't beaten them since 2013, and the Vikings haven't won in Cincinnati since 1992. So the Vikings hope to get that terrible season out of their minds last year, where they had like a very terrible defense, but a very good offense. The Bengals made some progress last year, especially with Joe Burrow playing good, but they need to hope that he doesn't get injured this year if they want to have any shot to have any sort of success this year. So who knows if that will be the case, but I'm probably going to pick the Vikings for this because the Bengals have just so many problems with them. I doubt the Vikings defense will choke that bad to let the Bengals get them, but who knows? That defense was pretty bad last year. All right. Then another interesting matchup as the Cardinals are at the Titans for the first time since 2013. The Cardinals won the last two. The Titans haven't beaten them since 2009. So they're hoping to um, keep that streak going. I mean, break that streak. So, of course, they had their one and done in the playoffs after having a very... Just like the Vikings, a very strong offensive showing, but their defense was so garbage. The Cardinals, meanwhile, I don't know why people, like, shadow them so hard like they thought they choked last year. I thought they did exactly what I thought they were going to be, like, 8-8, eight and eight, but it was pretty bad when you go 5-2, and 6-3 and three to collapse to 6-6, six and, six and then have an 8-6 and six record, just missed the playoffs by a tiebreaker. They're probably going to be good this year. It's going to be tough though in the NFC West, but unfortunately that is not going to be an easy start to year going up against the offensive firepower of the Titans. Even if the Cardinals' offense does good, which I'm sure it will, they got to deal with the double whammy. Well, actually, no, triple whammy now if you think about it. Derrick Henry, Ryan Tannehill, and now Julio Jones. I'm picking the Titans for this one. All right, so then we get to the, um, more 1 p.m. games. That is now the 49ers at the Lions for the first time since 2015. The 49ers won the last one. The Lions haven't beaten them since 2015. And the 49ers haven't won Detroit since 2011. They're, yeah, second to last time they came here. So the 49ers, of course, had their Super Bowl hangover. Finally get, hoping to get that off their chest. The Lions, of course, unfortunately, when they trade away Matthew Stafford, I think they they really are going to be like the worst team in the NFC. Like the Texans and Lions, I think, are going to be the teams that are going to make the run for the number one overall pick. I don't see really anything going their way. And so I'm picking the 49ers for this one. They were a 6-10 team last year, but it was a lot of injuries, just a Super Bowl hangover. With that out of the way, they'll probably be much better. Then a, then a big matchup in the AFC as the Steelers are at the Bills for the second year in a row. As the Bills won the last two, the Steelers haven't won against them since 2016. As the Steelers, I, after that 11-0 start, you saw what happened. They went 1-5. They should have gone 0-6 if, if the Colts didn't choke against them. But I think they're definitely going to have a st big step back this year, like barely even around 500. The Bills, meanwhile, 
fallen short of the Super Bowl. They are definitely a team that is one of the contenders in the AFC to make the Super Bowl. It's in a good position for them, and I'm going to pick the Bills to get this one. And then we get to the final 1 p.m. game, as it's the Eagles at the Falcons for the first time since 2019. The Falcons won the last one. The Eagles haven't won since 2018, and they haven't won in Atlanta since 2009. So, of course, the Eagles are beginning a new era with um, um, Jalen Hurts. Honestly, though, I think they probably should have started... um. Minshew, since Minshew's stats the last two years have been much better, and he's played on an even worse Jaguars team, so maybe he would excel with the Eagles, perhaps. I think they really should have given him the chance instead. Meanwhile, the Falcons, yeah, they went 4-12 and last year, but remember, a lot of their games, they lost in very close margins. Like, remember that blown opportunity against the Cowboys and Bears? So, the Falcons, even with Julio Jones, I think are much superior to the Eagles, so I'm picking the Falcons easily for this one. Let's take it forever to post in. All right, then we get to our 4 p.m. games. Start off with a playoff rematch as the Browns are at the Chiefs for the first time since 2015 as the Chiefs won the last three. The Browns haven't beaten them since 2012 and they haven't won an Arrowhead since 2009. Unfortunately for the Browns, that is going to be a tough, tough start to year having to play at Chiefs. And we'll see if last year was a fluke or they are indeed a team for real. But unfortunately, their defense is pretty bad. So I think that's going to really hurt them. The Chiefs, however, they got the Super Bowl um, hangover too, possibly, after getting crushed really badly. So the last time a team... Well, the last time a team um, made back-to-back -back Super Bowls, of course, was the Patriots of 2017 and 18. And, of course, they made back to the Super Bowl the next year and won it. So the odds right now are in the favor for the Chiefs to maybe make the return. But they got to play much better than they did last year. Like, that second half of the year, they played... Really not that good compared to like 2019 or hell, 2018. Way too many close games to feel comfortable with. It could come down to the wire. It's going to depend on how the Browns play. And of course, the Chiefs better not play bad like they did last year pretty much against the Browns. But I'm still picking the Chiefs for this one. Then it's the Packers at the Saints for the second year in a row. As the Packers won the last one, the Saints haven't beaten them since 2017. And the Packers, I mean, they haven't beaten them at home since 2014. Or should I say home, but because of Hurricane Ida, they're playing in Jacksonville. I don't know, why couldn't they maybe do like somewhere closer like um, Arlington where the Cowboys play? That's more close to New Orleans than Jacksonville is. And the Cowboys weren't playing that week. So weird. But the Packers, of course, the runner-up for the NFC Championship and possibly Aaron Rodgers' last season with the Packers. So they better make it count this time around to get that Super Bowl. Meanwhile, the Saints... Now, without Drew Brees, we're going to see how famous Winston will play. How many interceptions will he throw in this game? Oh, my God. That will be so funny. Be interested to see how this new era where the Saints go in. But, unfortunately for the Saints, I'm picking the Packers for this one. The Packers pretty much spanked the Saints pretty good last year. That's with Brees. Now, you got to rely on famous Winston. Not probably a good way to start the year. Plus, not even at home. You're in Jacksonville. Then it's the Broncos at the Giants for the first time since 2013. As the Broncos won... No, the Giants won the last one. The Broncos haven't won since 2013. And the Giants haven't beaten them at home since 2005. So bad teams are going to start off the year with a win. It's just, who do you trust more? And honestly, I trust the Giants more than the Broncos. The Broncos' offense has less firepower. At least the Giants have Saquon. And the Giants defense, I think, might even be better than the Broncos defense right now. So I'm picking the Giants for this. Then the AFC East division matchup as the Dolphins are at the Patriots. This is the second year in a row that they're starting each other in week one. As the Dolphins won the last one, the Patriots haven't beaten them since week one of last year. And the Dolphins haven't won in Foxborough since 2019. So, of course, the Dolphins, will they play good like they did last year is a very interesting question to see. Meanwhile, the Patriots... Released Cam Newton, as now the Matt Jones era is going to begin. Of course, he's probably going to struggle his rookie year. It's still going to be interesting to see how the Patriots will do this year. Are they going to be like, I think at worst they'll probably be like around 7 wins like they were last year. Best case, I could see them maybe getting to 10 wins and maybe make, being a playoff team. But I'm not exactly sure how that's going to go yet. But between these two, it will be probably close. It's probably going to come down more to how Matt Jones plays. But you know what? I'm still going to probably pick the Patriots, probably an upset to get it. And then we get to Sunday night, a game they should not have picked, 
as the Bears are at the Rams for the second year in a row, as the Rams won the last two. Actually, this is the third year in a row the Bears are at the Rams. My mistake. Third year in a fourth game in a row on a night game, as the Bears haven't won since 2018, and they haven't won at the Rams since 2015 when they were in St. Louis. So, of course, the Bears are stubbornly refusing to start Justin Fields as they should have, as they're going to probably get trounced by the Rams, who, of course, now have Matthew Stafford. They have a really good, well, not, I don't know about really good, but a good quarterback at least. So, of course, if Stafford plays really good, I could easily see the Rams being a Super Bowl contender in the a NFC because they have the number one defense. They just need a quarterback to get the offense in check. And even if he struggles, the Rams have crushed the Bears the last few years, so I'm easily going to pick the Rams for this one. And then we get to Monday night. I, I'm, I'm sad that they don't have two Monday night games to start off the um, year. I wish they had that still. But anyways, the Monday night game is the Ravens at the Raiders for the first time since 2017. The Ravens won the last two. The Raiders haven't beaten them since 2015 and 2015 at home when they were in Oakland. As the Ravens, of course, finally got the playoff monkey off the bat. At least back at least for Lamar Jackson. Hoping to win the NFC North this year. And the Raiders... This is going to be a tough question for the Raiders. Are they finally going to get above the 500 mark? Is This has got to be like a make or break year for them. You can't go like this strong start to year, but then choke and have a tear, like a sub 500 record. Something's going to have to give eventually. And unfortunately for them, they're going to have a very, very tough start to the year when they have to host the Ravens, who Lamar Jackson will probably torch that terrible defense of theirs, and, their, and the Ravens defense will probably shut down Derek Carr that offense. So I'm picking the Ravens. For this one. Alright, so those are my picks for week one. I see Buccaneers over the Cowboys, Jaguars over the Texans in an upset, Chargers over the football team in a close one, the Seahawks over the Colts just barely, depending on how Wentz played, the Panthers over the Jets, Bank the Vikings over the Bengals, the Titans over the Cardinals, 49ers over the Lions, Bills over the Steelers, Falcons over the Eagles, Chiefs over Browns, Packers over Saints. Bronco, the Giants over the Broncos, Patriots over the Dolphins in an upset, Rams over the Bears, and Ravens over the Raiders. So see you guys next time for week two, and hopefully I won't go 9-7 like I did last.